David Fincher is one of our most beloved directors. He's a three-time Oscar nominee, but never a winner. And for many, the entry point of being called a so-called film bro. We both re-watched and watched for the first time some of his films and are now going to decide which one is his best in bracket form. The seating in this bracket is determined by the respective Lebox rating for all of these films. There's 12 films that we are considering overall. We are not considering any of his series, documentaries, or short films. I'm Yuan, and I'm joined by Lachlan and our producer, Kevin, who's going to help us out if there's going to be any ties. And uh, Lachlan, without further ado, I think I want to get straight into the movies that we're going to discuss. Uh, now, the way this works is because there's a couple of movies that have a higher rating overall, a higher seating. And there's not a good number for like a clean bracket form, which would be 8 or 16 or 32. We have basically four movies that are already directly moving on into the second round. That's Seven, Zodiac, Fight Club and Gone Girl. So in this first round, we have The Curious Case of Benjamin Button going up against his latest film, The Killer. Lachlan, between those two films, uh, which one would you say is the better one? Not Benjamin Button. You that sure? film you hate Benjamin somehow, Button? instead of like getting better, it gets like worse from like start to end. So I don't know. Uh, the Killer is just a better movie. Listen, just before we uh, did uh, the Killer's review on the podcast, which by the way you can you can go check out. Um, I did rewatch the Curious. Uh, well, Benjamin Button is just a long title as well, which is also an, an annoying thing about it. It kind of moved me to tears at the end, and I don't know why, because it looks so bad. Like, the CGI at times looks so bad, but something about that story is, like, kind of sad, because it's so universally just, no matter which way you're going, you're going to end up in diapers. And not that particular part is, is like, really sad, and it's moving me to tears, but just the I idea of missing someone or losing out on your dreams and like dying alone and sad and without any memories like something about that fincher still is able to kind of construct in a story but i'd agree the killer is just a bit more solid the way that it's put together it doesn't have all of those flaws that you're like oh it looks bad but the story is kind of okay i think we're gonna have the killer move on into the second round luck london yes you good with that? i agree yes. all right yes i have no quarrels so another fan favorite of his, uh, I'm actually surprised that it's only, I, I guess it just speaks to the strength of his filmography overall, but we got the number fifth seed, The Social Network, going up against the least favorite pick in here, Alien Free, Alien Cubed. Lachlan, what's the correct title? You're more of an Aliens fan than I am. Alien, Alien, Alien. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> and then it just like appears behind you like Bloody Mary when you say it into the mirror. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'd love that. It just appears in your stomach and you got to dive into lava head first and a suicide bomb attempt. Um, yeah, I never watched Alien Free until uh, literally yesterday. And I think that movie has a ton of great setups. I think the uh, prisoner like planet where there's basically, basically a bunch of uh, murderers and outcasts and you get that alien set in there and they have no weapons to defend themselves is kind of a nice premise. And I really like... Sigourney Weaver's kind of journey that she goes on, which is all about like sacrifice and like what she really stands for in this world that kind of is just trying to exploit this this alien for their own profit. And she's just like, no, I'm about to I'm 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 about like reducing um destruction and, and hurt and all of that. And I think that's sick. But Man, that CGI alien and the editing and just like the score as well. There's just a lot of stuff that it's just so messy about Alien, Alien, Alien that, I mean, it's not going to beat the social network, right? Wrong. I believe <laughs> that Alien, Alien, oh, Alien, off. that's as far as I'm going to go because to most part, I agree. Alien, Alien, Alien isn't my favorite of the, the series. It isn't my least favorite of the series either, but when we're comparing it to the social network, I do have to admit that I think structurally and narratively, the social network is better, it's stronger than Alien, Alien, Alien. And on top of that as well, I just think that the film, the social network, has aged better than what Alien, Alien, Alien has. So for mm -hmm. me, 
if we're comparing him, to be fair, Alien, Alien, Alien has had more time to, f- <laughs> like, filter out the bad parts, but um, yeah. I'm yet to see the extra long edition, which, I don't know, I, I haven't three seen Three times as that. long? And that could, or that squared, could change. Actually. We don't know. It could be the Snyder Cut equivalent um, of Alien, mm. Alien, Alien's original theatrical cut. So if we're just yeah. going off... The alien, alien, alien that I saw from 1992 versus the social network. I'm going to go the social network. I hope it's going to be in like one by one kind of aspect ratio. And it's also got like six surfaces. So it's actually like cubed. I would love to see it's actually that. actually shot uh, vertically. Just, <laughs> shot vertically, yeah. TikTok. It's made uh, exclusively also for TikTok, yeah. Really glad that we don't need to say alien, alien, alien again. Uh, the remainder of this, uh, this bracket. Uh, next up, I think it's two of uh, Finch's most underrated films, The Game and Panic Room. Now, uh, Lachlan, uh, there's pretty much an, an auto-determiner here for what moves on because uh, I think you haven't seen The Game yet, right? I'm sorry. I didn't mean it's, to. It's, um, yeah. I really wanted to see it, but I just didn't get around to it. Um, maybe maybe before this before this edit comes out, I could give my rating and we could post it on the screen of how many stars it is and yeah, whether or not sure. I agree that it beats Panic Room. But I really yeah. liked Panic Room and it was my first mm-hmm. time watching it. So yeah. I I really like Panic Room. I thought it was great and I decided to pick that over uh, the game of which one I wanted to pick. Look, Michael Douglas is great and like so is... Uh, who's the second one in that? Uh, like second titled... Uh, on, on the game. Sean it, um, Penn, but he's not really Sean in Penn? it that much. Yeah. Okay. In that case, I'm happy because at least with Panic Room, I have... Jodie Foster? <laughs> yeah, fuck, I've had nah, I, I don't know what you um, <laughs> In Panic Room, I have, I have Jodie Foster and yeah. I have um, Forrest Whitaker, Forrest Whitaker both Whitaker. in it. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. The only bad I side of Leto. Panic Room is fucking Jared Leto's in it, so fuck nil. Um, yeah. Someone burn me uh, because Some, I don't know what it yeah. is. Why do I like Jared Leto movies? Why do I like Blade Runner 2049? Why do I like Panic Room? Why is Suicide Squad my favorite movie of all time? I don't know. Why is but Morbius for whatever reason, literally in his background right now? Yeah. It's not right now. But <laughs> he's about to put it I think he owns it on 4K as well, which is so much. Why is Morbius more. always in the background? <laughs> <laughs> uh you versus the guy she tells you not to worry about and he's literally in her bed yeah. um yeah now obviously we're gonna go with panic room here just for the reason that you haven't seen the game i think if i had to choose i would also go with panic room because it's one of those films where it's it's smaller scale it's like pretty set like stakes and it's it's just overall incredibly tense and in how it's filmed the game is more about like twists and turns and like fucking with your mind and like what's real and what's not and by the end of it you just feel like more confused and abused and gaslit than he did uh like 20 minutes earlier and it just like keeps repeating that cycle so it's like really interesting for that reason i think as as a movie overall it's it's stronger than most of the rest of his filmography so it's fine to be uh, out in this like preliminary round as well so that brings us to the last first shoe in uh matchup between the girl with the dragon tattoo and uh mac i think uh both two movies that we're not like incredibly passionate about right i don't it's a mac have a preference of either i think i'm leaning i think i'm leaning towards the girl with the dragon tattoo more Fair. um okay. Only because, well, it wasn't as boring as Mank. The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo is the only one that I haven't seen in a while and haven't rewatched yeah. in, a, in a very long time. So I could just be, you know, off with the fairies with how great I think this film is. But yeah, I'm going to go with The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. It's also the one that I haven't seen it, the, the, in the longest time. And it's one that's really hard to just like kind of get a sense of what it is just by kind of looking at some scenes because it feels like it's building a lot. And I don't know if I even remember what it ultimately is building towards. I even read like parts of the book and I, I still don't remember. Uh, Mank, he's drunk. It's in just black chapters, and white. Right? 
which is great. Yeah, just just the chapter titles uh, as well. Um, I think I'm gonna go with Dragon, go with the Dragon Tattoo as well. Uh, just because I think okay. it's not, there's no point in arguing over what goes into the next run. I feel like, yeah, uh, we can we can spend some time more on these upcoming matchups, which we're gonna get to right now. Our number one seed seven is going up uh, against the Killer. I obviously have a clear preference uh, here. I don't know if I even need to say more because I want to talk about this film more later on. But Seven is one of my all-time favorite films. I think it, it's sick. It's great. It's iconic. It's got the what's in the box scene, obviously. But also so wow. much more. It has redacted uh, person in it. But, I mean, it's still a really good movie, you know? So, uh, Lachlan, why should we move on with Seven into the next round? Because Seven is my favorite David Fincher movie. And Spoilers? Oh my God. I still think it's one of the better ones. Maybe not his best made, but at least for me, yeah. it ticks all the boxes that I want. And two of those boxes mm -hmm. are Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt. Hell yeah. I see, I see yeah. uh, seven. I see seven. Yep. But are you a real Fincher fan? Because I have it on 4K and DVD and Blu-ray seven times. And VHS. You want to see who's the bigger seven fan? Hold up one second. All you right, see this? You, you see this? All right, you know. Look at this. It's fucking huge, man. Incredible stuff. Look. Slop. Lost. Right. You, you did an incredible job getting that all the way to Well, your for credit, it's studio, not even mine. Because I, I know exactly where it is. In that building. <laughs> <laughs> sure, get over here. I'll dare you. Seven moves on easy. I think The Killer is also pretty good. You can check out our full-on spoiler thoughts uh, and review in the latest podcast episode. We'll break it down a bit more there. But uh, Seven, the better film between those two. Next up, ooh, this is, this is a big round. This is a big controversial round. Between uh, number four and five seed Zodiac against The Social Network. I think I have a preference here. So I kind of want to... Here, what uh, what do you think first? The two big things uh, are obviously the Social Network is an extremely popular Fincher film. I think not only just for film lovers, but lovers. the general audience alike. I think that there is mm -hmm. plenty to break down if you're a fan of cinema, but I also think if you're just looking for a pretty solid film, the Social Network stands in that field and, and you could probably just give it a good watch and, and enjoy it. Yeah. Personally, personally, I'm not the biggest fan of the social network in his filmography. I think it's a great film, but I don't think it's my personal favorite. I think that I, you can sh show us the, 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 the social network, Kevin, show, show us the disc again. Where's the oh, disc he's got gone? the disc. Yes. He's got the, the Blu-ray. Where is it? Show us the Blu-ray. Hey oh, oh, there it is. Hey oh. Not gonna lie, it's um, it's an ugly Blu-ray, but but good for you that you got it. But it's it's not last week. Uh, it's kind of kind of ugly. God. All right. Says there's. Kev says, Kevin disagrees. Uh, Kevin disagrees. Jeez. Um. Says this but seven I, foot tall. Yeah. I don't. So you're gonna go the Zodiac? Social network. Okay, geez, fuck yes, fine. I'm going Zodiac, all right. All right, I'm not. I'm going with the social network. I think Zodiac really? is great. I think it's equally popular, by the way, because a lot of Fincher films, at least for me, are available on Netflix. And I think they had like a global Netflix deal. That why, that's why we got like something like Mindhunter when, when he was doing stuff on Netflix, which by the way, never going to stop waiting for a new season. I think Zodiac, uh, I think it's a really solidly made film i and jake gyllenhaal is is amazing in it um but there's just something about the social network that i that i appreciate a bit more uh but they're both incredible like in my ranking i have them right next to each other and i guess the social network just slightly ahead of it and my cats are freaking out because i put this thing on here and i feel like they're gonna scratch it so i, I do need to put it into safety again hold on uh, but in the ah, stop it, stupid cats! I'm gonna unleash my. Uh, they they were about to scratch Raph, and they un unleashed it out on themselves. <laughs> uh, but okay, 
Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> Kevin, you can you can chime in and let us know uh, between those two which one uh, you'd pick, and it's gonna move on into the next round. You got the power. Without social network, you don't have the billions of imitations of the one scene with Andrew Garfield and uh, Jesse Eisenberg. Without the social network, you don't have that scene, iconic scene, which had been imitated by millions. My camera is not focusing right now. Thank you. Uh, like, you know, like Dylan O'Brien has done it. You have seen that imitation by Dylan O'Brien? For that reason alone, the social I network wins. Yeah. Zodiac is good. It's great. But social network is more important. That's, I rest my case. And hey, which one of these two uh, is getting a sequel potentially recently talks about the social network too? I mean, Sorkin has to write it. it. Sorkin has to write it. That's the only deal I I have. Sorkin needs to write it. What would that be about? Like Instagram or? (laughs) No, the the Myanmar genocide. Um, (laughs) Just like that. (laughs) Just that. (laughs) No, I mean, Jesus. no, it, it's gonna get, it's gonna get pretty dark. I mean, That's this it. first one was about like a, it. yeah, I, I, I think this next one is about the influence that this platform ultimately uh, misused, and it's. Uh, I I will say the the sequel is gonna be a pretty meta film, right? Yeah, because yeah. it's gonna be about cannibalism. Because we obviously need the Winklewasp twins back, and that's gonna be an issue. I uh, know they're out of the picture, but. Uh, but yeah, uh, I don't know. Jesse Eisenberg also hasn't been doing uh, a ton of stuff that is like worthwhile. I think they're doing yet another Now They See Me sequel. So I, I guess he's got something to do, but I'd rather see him in the social network. Um, but yeah, that means that, uh, yeah, we got the first semifinals seven against the social network. But before we get to do that, but before we get to that, <laughs> brain aneurysm right there for a second. Um, we're going to have the number two seat, Fight Club, up against Panic Room. Lockdown, was it that great that it maybe even rivals uh, the iconic nature of Fight Club? So, let me tell you, and you guys are going to be blown away by this, how close Panic Room came to beating Fight Club on my list. Mm-hmm. It did not come close at all, which is why I'm going to be voting for <laughs> Fight Club to go into the next round because I yeah. think it's the better of the two. I'm not going to prolong this any any longer. I think we gave Panic Room a shot, a bit of praise that it deserves to be uh, as, as one of the underrated Fincher films, uh, really worth checking out. But uh, it it doesn't beat it doesn't beat Fight Club. By the way, just just exposing you here. Kevin still hasn't seen it, but he he's seen it through clips online. But I guess he hasn't seen the film. So maybe, oh, maybe could you maybe... imagine us arguing? One of us was like Fight Club. One of us Panic was Room. Panic Room. He goes with Panic Room. And then It'd Kevin's just going to be like, "Yeah, Panic Room," and everyone would, everyone on the <laughs> internet would lose their mind. Well, have you seen Panic Room, Kevin, or would it just be a card toss no. for you? <laughs> I haven't seen. I haven't seen either <laughs> in one full <laughs> setting, so right? Or I have seen Fight Club basically because the whole movie is basically on the internet. Everyone talks about it. It's the film bro movie, right? So in some aspect, oh, yeah. I have seen it. I just haven't seen it in one full sitting. But it's on it's in the shelf. It's actually behind those blueies there somewhere. So yeah, yeah. I rest my case it's, again. It's the funny thing is. The funny thing is, no matter what we pick, we are picking a film bro pick because all of Fincher, essentially, at least his best parts, uh, best best movies, are all, like, very film bro Um, But they're also just very, like, you know, that uh, often gets used as a derogatory term uh, to describe the quality of these films. But I, f- I think that they are, there's some great movies in here that are, yeah, very universally loved. Um. A bit of an outlier, but also very beloved is is Gone Girl, number three seat against uh, the girl with the dragon tattoo. Um, I think Gone Girl is incredibly strong, the way that it builds on this thriller. We got two thrillers here, and uh, one of them definitely has grabbed my attention way more than I think I've seen it now three or four times already. I, I don't really want to rewatch Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. So for me, it's an easy pick. I'm going to go with Gone Girl. I feel bad. Because I haven't rewatched it, and instead yep. of rewatching something for this recording, I decided to watch uh, Five Nights at Freddy's instead um, <laughs> as an option. 
<laughs> yeah. Rewatching Talk to Me, which I've seen twice already this year, now a third time. And mm-hmm. uh, Scream, which I can't even tell you how many times I've rewatched that. Um, so I feel like I'm not giving the girl with the dragon tattoo the best opportunity to win, mm. which is Fair. why I am praying. End of sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Cut to a lock on praying for five minutes. Yeah. Wait, what are you doing? I'm not frozen. I saw. I thought I'd try to trick you to see if I was frozen. Um, <laughs> no, I'm I gone saw girl. you moving. I was just like confused. Uh, gone girl. Okay. Okay. Gone girl. I got you. Okay. So we're gonna go with Gone Girl, and we got our semi final. Unpopular titles. opinion. Uh, I would have chosen Girl to Dragon Tattoo. Yeah. Nah. Interesting. Well, get back to the muted seat, Kevin. You didn't get asked. No, actually, I, I want to know at the end if you would agree with our picks. So, sorry. Uh, but yeah, we basically have the number one, two, three, and five seat. The only one that we did kick out is Zodiac. Uh, so we are going pretty much with the popular picks. Now, if we have seven up against Social Network, one film that just barely skewed through here, I safely assume you're going to go with seven to go into the final. Oh, he's frozen again. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. I picked um, seven. I, I pick seven as, as well. I'm not. I'm not thinking about it. <laughs> it's a quick I'm run. Just I mean, staring into the abyss. Basically, we're here for the final now. Uh, easy pick. Uh, for for me as well to go with seven over the social network. Bit of a harder pick here with Fight Club against Gone Girl. I need some time to think on it. Uh, Lachlan, what about you? I where have I rated Gone Girl in my list? That's a great question. That's where I should start. I, I have rated it fairly high, but I have not rated it as high as Fight Club. I am a film bro, and I like Fight Club, so I shall pick Fight Club. Well, I also kind of misled you, because for me, it's also uh, Gone Girl is a couple ranks low Fight Club. I am also that typical uh, film bro uh, ranking, film bro. I guess, because... We're going to go with number one and number two seed. Those are also my number one and number two in my overall Fincher ranking. I think there's a lot of qualities that each of these films have. One of them is an incredible uh, crime thriller with a lot of like twists and turns and broken characters that are uh, pushed to the brink of uh, their sanity. Um, same with with Fight Club here as well, and it's definitely the more the more film bro side. Like if if someone says Fight Club is their favorite movie of all time, uh, I would definitely go like, oh, you need to see more films. But you you are on a great track here. Like it's it's like red flag for like moviegoers or like when people look at you from the outside. Like what's your favorite film? It's it's like oh, it's one of the one of these. But they're still like. Both really well made, incredibly uh, written, directed, shot, performed films uh, that are some of the best films of all time. Only for one of them, I do have a huge ass poster though, and that's Seven. So I'm gonna go with Seven. It's it's one of my favorite films of all time. Uh, it was actually <clears throat> it was actually in my top three uh, for like a, a couple of years, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna stick with it here. So. Uh, Lachlan, you're gonna you're gonna come along with me, tag along, and uh, an open open Fincher's box to figure out if <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow is actually dead or alive. I love Seven. Okay, mm-hmm. now I love Seven because I think that as a story, the f- film is it it flows, and I love the ideas of it, and I love a good thriller. Right, I really yeah. do. Which is interesting uh, because I have both Fight Club and and Seven at the top of my list. But yeah. here's the thing. When I put these two films next to each other, I love the fact that where Fight Club goes because you don't expect mm-hmm. it. And for me, yeah. that's my favorite thing is that you don't Fair. really, when you first watch Fight Club, know where it's going to go. It mm-hmm. really does evolve into this completely different thing. Yeah. And that for some is super exciting. That for some is also not as exciting. And I enjoyed it, but I did not enjoy it as much as the flow you get in Seven going through the the sins. Uh, and out of the two performances, whilst Brad Pitt in Fight Club is a lot of fun, 
Brad Pitt in Seven is a whole different animal and breed. Oh, he's a beast. Uh, and yeah. does an incredible job with the main lead. Um, so for me, I will have to pick Seven as the best Fincher movie. So that's going to be our winner. Thanks so much for tuning in and go check out our podcast on The Killer as well. And uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs>